we are in the podcast speaking your piece and uh, we are introducing shruti now who was also a co-walker with me on jay jagat yatra and uh, shruti has a very interesting perspective over education over walking so i thought why not just talk to shruti and hear her views so uh, i really want to ask shruti like uh, you introduce please yourself to the audience and also tell us about how you got involved with jay jagat yatra Ashima thank you so much it is so uh, nice to reconnect with you with uh, with our dream of walking to geneva i think where do i begin i think there was this natural pull these questions of how do we integrate education with the bigger problems of climate change or social injustice was a natural quest within me since since a few years now and um, part and i we we sought answers Uh, and a solution in in the walk because we felt that it gives us an opportunity to really experiment experiment different interactions within ourselves and of course with so many people and so it it was in a way a very good experiment to integrate possibilities you know just yesterday uh, we were discussing that had it been uh, not for covid 19 of course we would have been together somewhere walking and cherishing uh, that togetherness that really unknown seeking that we were in because we really didn't know where we were going to go the next day where what what we would eat uh, what conversation pan out and i think in many ways it taught us a lot after what we did also we have a lot of questions now so uh, i think that it really helped us to seek seek within and without the shift in thinking happened when i shifted from mumbai to uh, my hometown that shift i think uh, when a transition happens Uh, there are a lot of questions that come into you as to what is a city life what is a village life that's where it all began for me uh, i began to see a lot of hills i began to see the paddy fields for the first time and you know i i was asking what what am i doing you know uh, what will i do if i get a phd and all these questions kept pondering in my mind and i felt okay let me just see how things come up and i'll i'll do what i would want to do and so environmental activism was a very natural thing that came to me because uh, of the nature that i have rebellious nature that i'm gifted with the asking of why is this happening and why is this happening this way and all of that happened but then after that uh, a very beautiful transition happened in terms of education because i'm and i'm very happy that i made that choice of moving out from activism to education and being a teacher in a classroom engaging with children seeing what what is in there what is happening within within a human being because after all if i'm not able to understand myself how am i going to really connect with anything be it connect with me na- connecting with nature or human beings or systems processes anything so i think that really put me into a questioning to why certain behaviors with that experience of being in that teaching profession where i constantly thought that oh i want to go and teach and then coming back home to see that oh my goodness what was i doing i had to be just be there and learn from the from the whole process so yeah it has been very interesting i think because uh, like many people in the yatra there has been this journey of seeing the transition within oneself through the external many young people they were in cities and then they went to the villages and they saw this mm-hmm. stark difference and as you yeah. say that activism is outside but what is it with which is inside and how to work with children i'm really interested in that i would really love to hear from you what it is to be working with children and because you had already a background of environmental activism and you were seeing these changes outside how could you take that experience into the classroom and how you felt that you were learning from children itself if you can share with us as a teacher uh, i made a lot of lesson plans and i wonder why i made took so much time in making in planning the lesson plans because most often than not it would be more what would help me would be just listening to the children coming together as a you know spontaneous togetherness and something would spark and that that session would be would be just out of everything like i would have not even thought in my mind that fine this is how it is going to pan out i mean yes certain uh, sessions yes the lesson plan is required certain structure 
structure is required when everyone is taken into consideration like the views and the feeling level of all the children when we ask them that you know do you want to go to the butterfly garden to for a nature walk or would you want to go out in the street so you know these very basic questions really taps into that level where we're saying that see we respect each other and we uh, it's not that i want to take you to this place and i would want to teach you uh, the names of these birds rather yeah. than saying you know let let us just dissolve in where we are what is it to just see you know and yes uh, there have been contradictions you know sometimes when we give that flexibility of course because of a lot of distractions children ask questions which may not be relevant sometimes when i put a structure say today we are going to you know look at all the intimate relationships between the smallest of insects so let us go and explore and they are all excited to explore and uh, they would be like see auntie auntie this small little yeah. butterfly just not yeah. moving we've been seeing it as a teacher i have always been curious to see how i can tap that just let them wonder as to oh why is this garden lizard you know the way it is <laughs> just be in that wonder of watching it basking in the sun that just happens very beautifully i think the facilitator because the facilitator is an adult needs to have a very good training and skill development of her or his i would say integration of all the senses because when i am integrated when i am you know free when i have no blockages then i am going to really let flow myself and just be there and enjoy the whole process otherwise this whole thing of you know i would want to control or any blockage that oh i made this lesson plan i've got to deliver if there is a, even a slightest of that pressure in mind then i mean you will not be able to connect with a child who is saying that you know i i want to touch the soil now i think the key aspects uh, that i'm learning now from my niece and parth is that i'm just realizing that i've been a bad teacher <laughs> because uh, when i see them interact when i see them play i am learning from them each and every aspect i'm seeing that you know just by those touches making them getting into the body touches you know that actually does the trick i do not know why we have missed mm-hmm. on to physical touches in schools i mean it is so important it is so important that children just bump into each other play with each other with their hands with their legs do all that but still feel safe in that maybe they are also fighting it's okay mm-hmm. and maybe they are also crying it's fine you know how, how do we really bring in that connection with their bodies and uh, nothing else you know for now i'm seeing that you know just this is also missing mm-hmm. a lot of activity is missing creating with your hands and it's though it's simple it's so simple to just start with making a cane basket or start driving the storytelling uh, skills of a child and when i look at my niece uh, narrating a story i'm amazed i see myself as an amateur no, no. she would be like wow you know one thought and after another one imagination after another and i would be wondering oh my goodness now what do i tell after this <laughs> yeah i would with the story but she would not be i mean she would be on and on and on that's how beautiful it is <laughs> so yeah yeah true yeah. so what i'm drawing from what you're saying it is uh, i think you have learned a lot in terms of teaching also that uh, what it meant to be a teacher what it is to teach and usually if we see like the first part you were saying about how we train our teachers to make lesson plans to make mm-hmm. a structure uh, in the classroom mm-hmm. but what mm-hmm. i see in the le- latter part and also your re- realizations about the whole mm-hmm. pedagogy or the way mm-hmm. the teacher should be trained is mm-hmm. to be more free of these structures to be more spontaneous to be more mindful of each child mm-hmm. in the classroom so i really want to discuss with you how you see these teachers training in the schools whether like you were working with the schools what kind of teacher trainings you were part of and what mm-hmm. you feel that okay there can be this kind of shift in the teacher trainings now okay yes this is yeah very interesting i remember the first school that i worked with it was a small school in uh, tamil nadu and the first teacher training that they offered us was uh, a value based training where uh, a tai chi master had come to train us about walking just walking i think uh, these days a lot of very innovative teaching uh, i mean teacher training sessions or i would say people are really thinking out of the box to train their teachers which is good and i've witnessed that be it a small school in tamil nadu to an alternative school i think they're all thinking in the direction of the self which is very good because i could have not imagined in a small school in tamil nadu 
calling a tai chi master you know to just take a session on how to walk because we actually walked all the teachers became aware of our for walking from there to a lot of self level process level work that happened in prakriya and alternative school in uh, bangalore i think there is a long way to go yes even in this inner level work as uh, they call it in kriya in bhumi there seems to be this reconnection with the body the mind but the question that i have recent times pondering about is how are we going to go beyond this you know because yes it is important that i first become aware of my thoughts my emotions because it is important it is important to realize that i had this emotion felt when i was a child and i need to you know share this with somebody because then it will have its release in some or the other form because that's how nature works so this inner process work is excellent for many but again we need to really think about diversity because nature is full of diverse possibilities and so uh, it cannot be one solution so it cannot be one way of teach the training it's got to be a lot of experiments and uh, i'm glad it is happening i think um, yes i would like to also comment on how the teacher is trained to simply make lesson plans that kind of a you know target based system is also very falsified again if you are going to have all these teacher trainings and still have this big board on the head of the teacher to say that you know see you got to complete the uh, curriculum in so and so time period then obviously the teacher is going to feel pressurized because then she would be like oh my goodness i also need to look into my emotional well being my physical well being my spiritual well being and then i have this syllabus also to complete you know that definitely uh, builds on to it because i'm so deeply imagining this possibility of you know when all the teachers are going to come together and build a curriculum or rather say that you know we want an emergent curriculum we do not want another body to say that you know this is what we uh, want to teach i mean can the students even students for that matter they come together and they say that okay can we build a curriculum on a daily basis on a monthly basis whatever you know that that can change in different places but the onus of what we would want to teach and what we would what the children want to learn needs to be very localized needs to be very very connected because what is the point of me learning geography of some other part of the country when i don't know my own village or my own place i do not understand how a river flows where the rain rains come and you know all of that so this is very important to consider in designing how education can be for children i think it also contains so many philosophies which we learned about you know alternatives particularly mm. uh, happening all across the world uh, whether mm. gandhi talking about localization or decentralization or uh, tagore mm. talking about the you know whole mind body connect or different philosophers talking about the need of the child and be specific to that you know like need and also the teachers how they they need mm. to be you know like always their spiritual growth and their emotional growth is also part of process of the learning and teaching in the school mm. so mm. Uh, i think like when you are saying it is coming a lot of lot from your experience and not from you know like the big philosophies and i'm i can clearly see that it is really wonderful to see that shruti oh. i feel that you know many schools like particularly because you come from an alternative school background so you know these things but the pu- particular public ju- education mm-hmm. system which focuses so much on centralization of the curriculums and you know setting mm-hmm. a particular guidelines right. you know like i would also like to you know listen from you how you see that kind of process because you have come from different mm-hmm. uh, background and then mm-hmm. you have seen that also and what right. stark differences you see in those both uh, right you know, though they mm-hmm. are not in black and white but i would really mm-hmm. love to listen from you yes in many ways when i see a government school with you know the typical uh, you know either there is a neem tree in front of that small little school or some banyan tree or some children you know sweeping the the floor and all of that i'm very happy i'm happy to see that oh, okay fine they're independent i'm seeing that you know there are uh pros and cons in both the systems and uh, the need is to integrate both mm-hmm. both different alternative possibilities and what is already happening in government schools yes you know what i spoke about that children are independent more independent more connected because in village schools in village 
government schools they need to do things on their own be it getting their midday meal washing their dishes you know all of that is a very natural practice for them for them growing a tree digging saving seeds is very natural it comes naturally to them it's not to be taught or for that matter you know cooking which is so integral in our you know life systems i think uh, in cities or big schools we call ourselves you know trying to integrate head heart and hands you know in a way, very uh, sophisticated way and you know all those uh, uh, rooms are uh, there available to make sure that you know one lecture but one session happens in the garden and one session happens in the weaving room all of that is made available however we don't really know if at a regular basis cooking happens at home you know mm-hmm. children really know the the beans the nuts and how rice grows or you know th- this is something that naturally comes to a child in the village because he or she is seeing it and that is what is missing for the children in the cities i think somewhere that integration is what is is important is what i would say and this has been a dream you know to see how we can have forums platforms or some spaces some centers where children naturally come together and from different backgrounds you know uh, from government schools from private schools and there are these sessions where i mean there this uh, we can call it immersion times or you know exchange programs which is happening but then it's very less i mean seven days in a year is is like just showing off that you know okay uh, uh, i as an uh, international school uh, person expert i'm making sure that student exchange program happens once in a year seven days i we understand but that that's not how it works we need to make it a more uh, consistent and a, an opportunity where children really come close to each other try to understand each other so i think that's a very far fetched dream <laughs> but mm-hmm. definitely possible because you know if children are you know we've listened to this from our grandmothers and our grandparents that children are like clay and we can mold them the way we want to it's so true if we show them greater possibilities if we connect them with a lot of things you know uh, be it nature trees be it all the children from different backgrounds and rather than all these products that that are being advertised if we show them a potter if we show them a weaver if if we show them a farmer they are going to be interact they are going to be all very naturally interactive and they build empathy and all of this will naturally happen you know that mm. we are taking two sessions on how to build empathy which is important in many ways but efforts which will remain efforts yeah so this uh, really um, brings me to a point where i would really want to ask you whether in your classroom practices or mm-hmm. uh, in your uh, own interaction with students have you seen Hmm. such changes happening uh, if you can give us some hmm. examples where like children hmm. got engaged in farming or any kind of physical hmm. uh, aspect uh, or they hmm. got into the sportly or like hmm. being close to nature and they really try to change hmm. some of their behavior or you know hmm. like they felt a change or you felt a change among the classroom um you know from the the most recent experience uh, i was teaching environmental science to uh, 9th graders and 10th graders you know for a project that uh, was again you know it had to be done it was an icsc project that uh, was uh, compulsive given a choice they would not want to do any project <laughs> you know children are like that they do not like projects being given they would love to design their own project that's how they are at that age level you know when they are in the 9th grade and 10th grade they they are more imaginative so yes uh, when uh, we had this project in hand and uh, i told the children that you got to do this project and then uh, i also found that uh, there are children who are very i would say you know because they are in that environment of city they do not want to touch cow dung they do not want to you know touch the soil the dried leaves make compost you know all of these things they were a bit keeping themselves away from you know so whenever we would go to a nature walk i would i had observed that oh okay fine there seems to be a distance i would uh, probably some of my children would have told that uh, the shruti auntie is very cruel she is asking us to put our hands into cow dung only then uh, she would let us do a, a project that we want to do so i gave them a choice you know i gave them a choice that you know you can do this project and you would get bonus marks if you put your hands into the cow dung and uh, i remember one of the children uh, thinking oh should i should i not and then he finally put he's a ninth grader and i would have never imagined that innocence in a ninth grader you know who is putting his hands into the cow dung and then he says that auntie i put my hands in the cow dung and i can feel the bugs in my hands 
<laughs> so that was an accomplishment and i then also saw a change shift in the uh, questioning uh, part of the child because he has been very shy he would think that my questions are not very relevant or uh, not as intellectual as the others he had assumed that in his mind and that i felt that you know was uh, not helping him being more engaged in the classroom but then after that after you know being more active in the biogas plant making he he kind of you know started asking more questions though silly it was in, it was so important that he just asked questions so uh, really uh, love sharing this piece of incident yeah. and um, so i think small little things small achievements they really mean a lot for children <laughs> yeah that's wonderful shruti because we want these kind of stories because people sometimes find where where are those examples where are those stories where people are changing and these are little rays of hope where mm. you know which we are finding in these podcasts that okay people are doing wonderful work mm. and they are making some some little changes in their lives and mm. children's life or in the mm. places wherever they are working so mm. thank you so much shruti also maybe you can share with us anything you know which you are thinking to do after this yatra after all these interesting mm-hmm. work with the children and um, mm-hmm. and you walk mm-hmm. you also interacted so much with children any mm-hmm. anecdote from the yatra or uh, what now you are looking forward to yes sure i'm i'm trying to recall a conversation that we had with some of the kids they were all uh, girls and uh, they were telling me that they were sharing how they grow some trees by by their home they do it by themselves right and i was asking them that how is it that the eucalyptus has grown all over here i was just curious uh, do the children know that there is all this cultivation happening and they were actually aware they said that you know our parents they go to plant those trees and uh, they are paid by the government they get wages to do that so they they were telling me but that you know didi lekin humko to na ये फ्रूट ट्रीज बहुत अच्छा लगता है हम संतरा का सीड्स है वो इकट्ठा करते हैं और हम लोग फिर वो डालते हैं हम लोग के घर के आगे क्योंकि हम लोगों को फल खाने में मजा आता है ना सो ब्यूटीफुल आई थिंक दे आर सो वेल वर्स विद ऑल द ट्रीज दे वुड सी समथिंग एंड दे नो व्हाट सीड इट इज यू नो so this i found in almost all the kids so yes i think these are the basic things that we need to learn and of course i think for me uh, in the yatra it's more of a learning from our own fellow members because we were uh, together and uh, of course we all of us had a child within us trying to learn something trying to unlearn something trying to uh, because we're all in this together we may think that you know we are grown in experience we have seen more life but then each time we see a child uh, enjoying in her his to- totality i'm spell bounded i'm seeing that where is that totalness that total surrender gone in me you know when am i going to you know just forget everything and just get wet in the rain and just watch that garden lizard and do nothing <laughs> i mean uh, that that's what uh, children teach me that's what my niece teaches me going forward to talk about uh, what we would do from here on from the yatra after the yatra honestly we we not decided anything and uh, uh, it feels like we do not want to decide anything <laughs> if <laughs> yes of course there is this in the urge to you know uh, see how we can get more and more close to the land we began saving seeds and uh, it feels good we we began uh, planting a few trees here and there and i think you know sometimes i i do not know why why the thought came up as to just sow seeds not even plant trees because then it is such a constant conflict within because uh, somewhere this identification thing no i i know this is a little more spiritual in terms of you know i am doing it but then the day i say that you know this is just being done it's just mm. happening that's when everything just happens i don't know i sometimes have this very little fear of doing an act with the slightest of ego that's there within me and then i know that i oh my goodness i i rather don't do it <laughs> mm. you know and uh, then i feel that uh, because then what have i planted in the uh, in the soil have i planted my own ego into the soil then i do not want to plant that tree 
let something just naturally come up even if it is a whatever i do not know what what that would be it would be a monoculture forest or it will be a biodiverse forest i do not know but yeah this is something that is happening as a conflict with it which will lead to a clarity or may not lead to a clarity so that's for us to wait and watch but i'm very happy to see how you have uh, connected with the land and you know being in kutni farming yeah. how beautiful i i was reading the post of gratitude that you had posted on facebook thanking a friend anu and it was so nice to just read that to see how uh, you're feeling grateful to small little learnings and uh, one line that you know has been in my mind is to how gracefully take out you know and for me i had this in my mind that how do i take out i do not want to take i mean this is something that is happening in nature uh, why do i take out the weed it is part part of a nature's game let me just observe let let the weeds come why do i interfere but then when i say that okay fine there is something that uh, needs to be grown also for the family there are people who need food and then if i can gracefully take you know when that aspect of grace comes in then it's so beautiful then everything is so one and this reminds me of how art is integrated with you know life education so beautiful right when i uh, talk with you that's something that keeps coming to me you know that grace that those body movements really bring me bring life to to everything dance and music and creating things and it definitely kindles that uh, spontaneity and creativity thank you so much shruti <laughs> and yeah. also i'm i'm feeling wonderful that uh, you are bo- you're taking this time to ponder over these kind of questions and i'm really happy that you are getting to play with a child who is yeah. so intuitive and who is so much you know like into storytelling so i'm i'm feeling so so beautiful and i wish mm-hmm. you all the luck all the beautiful energies blessed to on you thank so you so much joy <laughs> um, <laughs> i would like to end the podcast here uh, mm-hmm. maybe we we'll talk maybe sometime else about the whole aspect which you have again brought up about the aspect of uh, arts and the body movement and the music mm-hmm. and how everything is so much connected to life and mm-hmm. the change mm-hmm. within us uh, yeah. <laughs> that note i would like to end the podcast here thank you so much thank you shruti thank yeah. you